Hello everyone and welcome to our channel we are techies and today I'm going to discuss some really important react js interview questions These are the questions that I usually ask in a react js interview. So let's start So I start with a candidates introduction first the candidate should be aware about the project setup The candidate should be aware of the react version that is being used in the current project Bundlers bundlers are important the candidate should be aware like which bundler has been used for bundling purpose like there are multiple uh, Options in the market currently with like webpack roll up fuse box parcel um, Also, the candidate should be aware of deployment process if the if the company is following CI CD approach or manual deployment um, Doesn't matter at least the candidate should be aware of what process has been has been followed in the uh, in their application or in the form um, Unit testing libraries is also uh, something which is important. The candidate should have knowledge of at least just uh, having knowledge of enzyme or react testing library would be an added advantage. E2E testing is not mandatory, but uh, knowledge is a big plus. Uh, uh, right now, the uh, the frameworks like Cypress, uh, sorry, the libraries like Cypress and Puppeteer are are uh, the famous ones uh, are the most used ones if the candidate has knowledge about these it's a big plus um, six point is really important framework or application development so this we have to check according to the opening that we have um, so the candidate should uh, fit into framework or application development so the candidate basically should have a mindset of framework development and application development and should be able to switch between these two development okay um, so this is this 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 actually depends on the kind of role that we are looking for uh, uh, Let's let's not discuss about this in this particular video. Okay um, So usually I start with react js core features. Okay, uh, depending on the candidates experience uh, uh, I I go into basic or advanced questions. So for now, let's discuss both of them. Okay Now uh, the first question is what is virtual dom how virtual dom works? What makes react fast? All three questions have one answer. We will discuss about it. Okay. Second question is what is error boundary? Again, a very basic questions. We will discuss the answer in the later slides. Advanced question is how to do code splitting. Explain react.lazy and suspense. Okay, so this is an advanced question. Um, we will discuss how to answer this in later slides. Let's 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 go to the answers now. Virtual DOM and how it works. Okay, so virtual DOM is basically a lightweight copy of the real DOM. Okay, um, but it doesn't have the power to change the screen how the UI looks like. Okay, it it is a copy, but it doesn't have the power to manipulate the screen, and that is an important point. So on, when we when we run when we do React DOM dot render on the first run, both virtual DOM and the real DOM trees are created. Okay, so and when there is an update. Uh, React compares the virtual DOM with the snapshot of the virtual DOM taken right before the update of the virtual DOM. Okay, so it compares the virtual DOM snapshot with the virtual uh, with the updated virtual DOM and gets the difference between these two, and that difference is sent to the real DOM. Okay, so so this calculation of difference. Uh, process is called diffing and the algorithm used is diffing algorithm so remember this term when you are answering this uh, particular uh, question uh, remember this term diffing algorithm so react uses diffing algorithm to find out what updates were done in the uh, in the dom um, the other important term is reconciliation so uh, what happens when we get the difference this difference needs to be reconciliated in the real dom Okay, so once react knows which virtual DOM objects have changed then react updates only those objects in the real DOM This is called reconciliation. Okay, so another important term reconciliation for virtual DOM um, So this is one of the reason why React JS is a very high performance JavaScript library. So all these three questions you remember those three questions are being answered in the same answer, okay um, so when you are when you are uh, talking about virtual DOM, you should talk about uh, that uh, virtual DOM is then exact replica of real DOM, but doesn't have power to manipulate the screen. And talk about the diffing algorithm. Talk about the reconciliation process. Other important aspect is that a React performs an batch update. Okay. So what is batch update? So this means that the updates to the real DOM are sent in batches instead of sending updates for every single change in state so instead of sending one by one they create a batch of the updates and send that batch to the real dom okay if 
fine uh let's move on to the other question so the so the second question was what is error boundary okay so whenever a javascript error uh, occurs in a ui it usually breaks the ui right uh, so instead of showing that uh, the uh, the app has broken uh, we can have a proper fallback ui page like we can uh, show uh, we can show some message or we can show some um, um no some picture uh, depicting our message so proper fallback ui for any uh, error so these these can be done by using error boundaries so error boundaries are react components that catch javascript errors anywhere in the child component tree log those errors and display a fallback ui instead of the component tree that crashed okay so let's see how can we write a error boundary so this is an example so error boundary we have to wrap our component uh, within an error boundary and error boundary class we can create like this so you see this is uh, created in the old class component way because right now there is no way to create a function component for error boundary uh, so while creating error boundary we have to take care of few things we have to override two functions a static get derived straight from error this is a mandatory function that we need to override for error boundary then we have an optional component did catch this is an optional function um, so in static so when an, whenever an error occurs in, in the in the javascript or code this particular uh, function gets called static get derived state from error and what it does it turns the state into true okay and when this is true the render the fallback ui is rendered this render function is called so this is how error boundary works important question yeah this is the, the importance medium if the candidate knows it is a very good sign that a candidate is following uh, you know certain principles while coding um, so it's a good sign if candidate is not able to answer that it won't be a blocker but won't give a good impression about the candidate's coding standards okay code splitting so this is an advanced question uh, uh, basically i asked when the candidate has three plus years of experience okay so uh, you must have seen the main dot bundle dot js bundle uh, uh, in, in in your uh, dev tools when you are going to the sources tab you must have seen that bundle so most react react apps will have their files bundled using tools like webpack rollup or browser files all these are bundlers okay so bundler is a process of following imported files and merging them into a single file called bundle which we have already talked about right main dot bundle dot jl that is a single file uh, that bundle gets created okay the best way to introduce code splitting into your app into your react app is through dynamic import okay so we don't import only so we don't import uh, certain files in the in the bundle until they are called okay so this is called lazy loading and the component that does is uh, the function that does it for react is react dot lazy okay let's see what it what it is so this is a snapshot from the react documentation uh, itself um, so usually our import would look like this import markdown preview from this okay this is a simple static import now this is a dynamic import um, so what this means uh, lazy will take a function okay uh, and the function will have the import statement so whenever this markdown preview is called or is rendered then only it will be imported to the bundle so the bundle signs will increase only when this is being called so this is called dynamic import okay and this is possible in react using react.lazy okay now what is suspense so while this is loading right because this is dynamic import this is dynamic loading it will take some time and during that time you can have a fallback ui you know and uh, like uh, you can have a loading screen or something a loader or a spinner something you can do and that you have to give it in the suspense okay so you can use a suspense boundary and in that suspense you can pass a fallback ui okay so this is an advanced question uh, for react js core features uh, good to know uh, but not not mandatory to know okay now 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 we are coming to really important part react hooks so familiarity with react hooks is of utmost importance now if you are using react you should be aware of about the react hooks so experience with common react hooks use state use effect use context so these three hooks you should be knowing uh, if you don't know it it's a blocker uh, familiarity with advanced react hooks use reducer use imperative handle use layout effect etc is good good to know 
experience in memoization with hooks use memo and use callback so you should be knowing this if you are a three plus years experience developer if you don't know this this can be a blocker uh, experience with creating custom hooks really important uh, not a blocker but really really important okay so what are react hooks so hooks is uh, you must have heard that hook is just a normal javascript function but what is the difference between a normal javascript function and a react hook so react hooks follow certain rules these three rules we'll talk about okay so only call hooks at the top level so when we call the hook we should always keep it at the top level okay if we cannot call hooks we should not call hooks inside loops conditions or nested function hook should always be at the top level of the react functional component okay this rule ensures that hooks are called in the same order each time a component renders so the ordering is important in case of react hooks okay only call hooks from react functional component so hooks can be called only from inside a react functional component okay so that's a that's a big difference between javascript function normal javascript function and a react hook and react should start with use so that's a nomenclature that we have to follow we have to always start a, a react hook name with use okay so these three uh, principles we have to follow using when we are uh, talking about react hooks so total as of now uh, version 18.2 there are total 15 inbuilt hooks in react okay so this is the list of uh, all those hooks if you know these all uh, hooks it's really really good and it sends a very good impression on the on the panel um, if you are able to name all these inbuilt hooks okay uh, let's let's talk about some really important hooks on that on, on this list let's talk about use state so uh, so so the basic question for a, a use state would be what does use state hook return and accept okay and for intermediate level it would be how to update object properties stored in the state uh, let's let's talk about the basic uh, uh, question now so use state hook will take a parameter okay and that parameter is the initial state so it can be a value and it can be a function that passes the value okay uh, and it returns an array of two values first is the current state and the second is the set function that lets you update the state to different value okay and that will trigger the re-render when you call this set function on right that will trigger the re-render of the component okay uh, so this is uh, the syntax of uh, use state you are passing as uh, initial state as a parameter and you get back an array this is the state value and this is the uh, the function the set function which will trigger the re-render of the component um, so coming to the second question which was of intermediate level updating object properties stored in the state okay so suppose you have an object like person which has two properties name and age okay now you want to update the name from lance to we are techie suppose okay uh, so if you try like this you do just person dot name dot equal to value and set person this will not work this will not trigger the re-rendering of your uh, of your ui and it will not change the state as well okay um the correct way to do is spread spread uh, the state the previous person state and then update only this uh this particular state okay uh, so this is the correct way to do it uh, uh, by spreading i mean creating so you must be aware of the concept of shallow copy deep copies if you're not aware i'll create I'm, I'm planning to create a video about it also um, so how to create shallow and deep copies uh, um, of an object is spread operator actually creates a deep copy of an object if the level of the object is not nested okay uh, we will talk about it in the in the videos and in, in the next video okay so yeah so this is the correct way to update the object properties in the state okay so this was the answer to the intermediate question okay uh, uh so this is it for the video as of part one of this video i am going to discuss about the other hooks like use effect and other hooks we'll talk about the patterns react patterns advanced uh react hooks and we will discuss some common jds we will discuss what question guidelines basically you can find out the question reading through the jd you will be able to find out what questions will be asked uh in that jd 
okay so we are going to discuss about it uh, in, in the later videos i am going to create a series of this so this will take some time uh, till then you can subscribe the channel and keep watching keep learning and enjoy the process of learning thank you for watching uh, goodbye